Due to popular demand, I guess, here are another 10 small but amazing football stadiums of the future. This will be an incredible upgrade for Austria's Donaupark Stadium, located a stone's throw from the Danube River and an even smaller stone's throw from a huge furniture warehouse. Why is that relevant? Well, it's not just near it, it's sitting directly on top of it, which is quite similar to this stadium in Serbia, but the design is a lot more subtle about it. I find it kind of strange that while an epic moment could be happening on the field, below there'll be people saying, Oh, this coffee table would look absolutely gorgeous in Hilda's living room, don't you think? Yeah. Lions Arena. When I first saw this design, I thought that due to COVID, they had to install a giant hand sanitizer dispenser in every corner of the stadium. But actually it's just the floodlights, as you can see. Although, I hope that's in eco mode or something, because it's going to need to be brighter than that. I like this design though, it's unique, but in a subtle way. Ah, uh, Poland, why are you doing this to me? I'll do my best to pronounce it. Zagłębiowski Park Sportowy is an absolute beauty of a design. With its see-through wooden exterior that reminds me of those f***ing stupid shutter shades. The wooden exterior allows it to blend in to the surrounding parkland. To an extent, I mean it's still a stadium, it's not like you're going to accidentally bump into it. You, you, you know it's there. The redevelopment of Vandonga and Daru Stadium. Vandonga and Daru, by the way, sounds like an obscure Dutch children's TV show about a man and his pet kangaroo. Vandonga and Daru, hee hee, Vandonga and Daru, hee hee. Join this creepy panda man and his pet kangaroo. Hee hee. That was that was weird. I get the feeling that this design will be very polarizing. The stadium itself is perfectly fine, but those asymmetrical towers poking out of it mightn't be popular with everyone. The towers were added, of course, not for aesthetic purposes, but for the almighty dollar. Well, it's the Netherlands, so it's not the dollar, is it? It's the... the Stroopwafel? Is that their currency? Yeah, that sounds right. Riptide Stadium is a new stadium to be built in the deceptively named state of Rhode Island, which was named by the Dutch. Oh, that makes sense. They have odd names for stadiums and states. Anyway, I like how they've kept one side of the stadium open, so you get a nice view of the river. This stadium will be home of a USL team that doesn't exist yet, that's expected to be named Riptide FC. Gibraltar's national stadium in its current state is an embarrassment to the great footballing nation of Gibraltar. Okay, it's not that bad. But all I'm saying is that a team that includes the likes of the legendary Kenneth Cipollina deserves a top-notch stadium. This design is exactly that. As you can see, it's a stone's throw from, well, a giant stone. The Rock of Gibraltar to be precise, which is almost as big as the Rock of the USA. Although, does it even lift bro? The answer is no. Wait a second. Wait a second. It does lift. Chairlift. Okay, technically it's a cable car, but come on, let that one slide. Stadion NK Osijek. 
This elegant design features an extended roof that shades both those inside and outside the stadium. In Australia, this is known as a wraparound veranda. And if you like to live the high life, there are skyboxes featuring saunas, spas, and floors. This could all be yours for just 40 million euro. Thank you, madam. Looks a bit like the other Polish stadium, but with an all-white, partially see-through exterior, which offers ventilation and, due to the shape of the blinds, also offers protection from the weather. The interior is fairly simple, but something that I like is the seating is elevated, so those in the front rows get a better view. Wyndham City Stadium will be the new home of the newish A-League team, Western United. This stadium will be built in the middle of nowhere basically, although it technically still counts as Melbourne. I'd assume though that in 10 years time, it will be surrounded by newly built suburbs. The design is fairly bare bones, but still impressive, and I'm sure they'll be happy to move from the Oval Stadium that they currently play a lot of their matches in. And now, yet another Polish stadium. But this time there are no squiggly lines in the words, so I should be able to pronounce it. Stadion Mieski Vketefekesh. Ah, damn it. Well, it's not just me, I think it's all Australians that struggle to pronounce Polish words. For instance, our highest mountain, everybody calls Mount Kosciuszko. But I'm sure that's not right. Kościuszko. There you go. Anyway, back to the stadium. Poland are killing it with the designs. I really like this one as well. But who can be surprised if they can invent the bagel, which is perhaps mankind's greatest achievement, then designing a stadium should be a cakewalk. Also, if you didn't notice, it's actually a two-in-one football stadium and indoor arena, which is a clever idea. Just, just before I end the video, a little tangent. The phrase cakewalk, it means very easy. So does the phrase piece of cake and the phrase walk in the park. Do you think somebody just mixed up the two and it stuck? Well, if it did, it probably went something like this. Timothy, how did you go in the test today at school? I think I did quite well. It was a, a walk in the cake. Uh, it, was a, it was a cake walk. A what? A cake walk. It means very easy. Hmm. Cake walk. I've never heard anyone say that before. Kids at my school say it all the time. Timothy, are you telling fibs again? No, you're just a boomer. You wouldn't have heard of it even if it was real. Oh, shit. You're a dull boy, Timothy. And that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, and it's an absolute necessity that you have a good one.